Hi, in this video we are going to discuss some important questions that can be asked for the experiment WBC count. So when this experiment is asked, you have to write the aim, the principle, the observation wherein you have to draw the squares, then the steps of calculation in detail and finally the result. So you just have to charge the counting chamber. You need not count it, count the cells until the examiner asks you to. Okay, otherwise you just have to charge it as well as focus for counting the cells. So now we'll see some important viva questions that can be asked. So first of all regarding WBC pipette. So for counting WBCs, we use the WBC pipette of the hemocytometer. So the favorite question would be, what are the differences between a WBC and RBC pipette? So see from this image itself, we can see that the RBC pipette has got a red bead inside, whereas a WBC pipette has got a white bead. Now what about the markings? See in RBC, we, we know that it is 0.5, 1 and 1, not 1, whereas in WBC it is 0.5, 1 and 11. Okay, because the dilution needed for RBCs is much more, the markings on RBC pipette will be more when compared to the WBC. The next difference is the mouthpiece. Here you can see that an RBC pipette has got a red mouthpiece, whereas a WBC pipette has got a white mouthpiece. Now another difference is the size of the bulb. The RBC pipette has got a bigger bulb when compared to the WBC pipette. So these are the major differences. So the next question that can be asked is why bulb of WBC pipette is smaller than the RBC pipette. See we know that RBC, the count of RBC is in millions, whereas for WBC it is in thousands and ten thousands. So naturally, in order to count the number of RBCs, we have to dilute it more. So that is why the RBC pipette has got a larger bulb, so that we can dilute it uh, 200 times. But whereas for WBC, the bulb is small because we, we, we have to just dilute it 20 times. Okay, so that is a major difference. What are the functions of the bead in the bulb? See, the bead in the bulb has mainly got three functions. One is for identification. Next, it's for proper mixing of the diluting fluid and the blood. And third is to know whether the pipette is absolutely dry or not. Okay, if the pipette is not dry, the bead will stick on to its surface. Whereas if it is completely dry, it will move around. So that is how we know that the pipette is dry or not. Now, what are the other uses of a WBC pipette? See, for questions like these, the basic principle is that if the cell count is more, we use an RBC pipette. If the cell count is less, we use a WBC pipette. So see, the other use of WBC pipette would, would be in all conditions in which the count is less. So for example, in case of severe anemia, we can use it to count the RBCs. So it can also be used for other functions like platelet counting or sperm counting. Okay. In which condition is RBC pipette used for white cell counting? See here also the same principle. So RBC pipette is used only when the cell count is more. So when, when will be uh, the white cell count more? It will be in leukemia. It will be in malignancies like leukemia. right? So for that we use an RBC pipette. Next we can expect questions about the diluting fluid that is used. So we know that the diluting fluid used for WSBC count is the Turks fluid. right? So the next favorite question will be what is the composition of Turks fluid and what is the function of each. So see it's got a gentian violet which uh, stains the nucleus of the WBC. Then it's got glacial acetic acid which will destroy the RBCs and it contains distilled water. So these are the main con constituents of the Turks fluid. Now we'll see the brief procedure. The examiner will also ask you the procedure of how to do this WBC count. So the procedure is we'll first take a small quantity of the diluting fluid in the wash glass and then we'll prick our finger and suck the blood up to the 0.5 mark on the WBC pipette. Then we'll uh, take the WBC pipette up to mark 11. So the next question that can be asked here is what is dilution factor? See dilution factor is see here we said that we are taking blood up to 0.5 right and then we are taking the diluting fluid up to mark 11 of which in the stem there is uh, in the stem there is only diluting fluid so we are not counting that so practically there is 0.5 parts of blood and 10 parts of diluting fluid so naturally the dilution factor is 0.5 divided by 10 which is equal to 1 by 20 so the dilution factor is 20 so this is how you will obtain the dilution factor okay 
then we mix the pipette well by rolling between uh, on our palms and then we discard the first few drops from the pipette so the next question will be why why should you discard the first few drops from the pipette because it contains only the diluting fluid okay the next step will be to charge the counting chamber so at this stage you can be asked questions regarding the counting chamber what's the name of the counting chamber it is improved new boss double counting chamber right then so we keep the counting chamber undisturbed for 2 to 3 minutes for the cells to settle down and then we count the cells under low power see remember for wbc counting we are using low power okay so in low power the cells will appear as round dark dots with a halo around them see they act as refractile bodies they'll have a halo around them so how the, so the next question favorite question here will be how will you differentiate a wbc from a dust particle so see this is the characteristic feature the wbcs will be refractile they have they will have a halo around them whereas dust particles will not be refractile so that's how you will distinguish it okay so now we can we should count the wbcs that are present on the wbc area counting area right and then do the calculations so now we'll see the next part that is the calculations so we know that in this double uh, counting chamber this is the WBC counting area. We know that the central part is for RBC, whereas these four corners is for WBC. See, these are the four primary squares that are kept for WBC counting, right? So we have to count the WBCs present in all four of these secondary uh, primary squares. So this is a magnified view showing the wbc is present here so you can see the wbc is very clearly here so these are the wbc's we have to count them and then uh, mark it in the table right so now we will see the derivation so see the length of one primary square see primary square here will be this big square here okay so this is the big square here so the length of this this part is one millimeter right now it contains secondary squares so the length of one secondary square this part this thick is 1 by 4 millimeter okay now the depth of the chamber is 1 by 10 so the new bus counting chamber has got a depth of 1 by 10 millimeter so what will be the volume of one secondary square this that which we uh, studied previously in our uh, schools it will be volumes will be length into breadth into height which is 1 by 60 millimeter cube right now like that we are counting 64 squares how did we get how did we get 64 here see in one square we've got 16 we are dividing it into four right so in one square we've got 16 similarly we are counting four squares so naturally the total number of secondary squares counted will be 16 into 4 which is 64 okay so the volume of 64 squares will be 1 by 60 into 64. Okay, so that is the volume of, that, that is the amount of volume of blood that which we are counting. Okay. So let the uh, sum total of WBCs in that 64 squares be N. In that case, 1 by 60 into 64 millimeter cube of volume. This is our volume that much contains N WBC. Okay. Now, so 1 millimeter cube of diluted blood contains 1 by 60 into N divided by 64 WBC. So, now we know that the dilution is 0.5 in 10 parts which means dilution factor is 20. So, 1 millimeter cube of undiluted blood will now contain 1 by 60 into uh, N by 64 into 20. We are multiplying it with the dilution factor. So, we will get it as N into 50. Okay, so this is how we have to write the calculations uh, in the answer sheet because we are not counting, we are not finding out the proper N, right? If the examiner asks you to count, you will have to count, but otherwise you just have to substitute it as N and write the derivations. So the other questions that can be asked from the theory part when you get a WBC count is, what is the normal range of WBC count? So what is the normal range? It is 4000 to 11000 per millimeter cube of blood, okay? And what are the physiological variations in uh, the total leukocyte count? So you will have to answer, you will have to be ready with the uh, causes of leukocytosis as well as leukopenia. Now what is the difference between leukocytosis and leukemia? 
see the major difference here is that leukemia is a malignant condition and the cell count in case of leukemia will be in millions whereas in leukocytosis the cell count will, will only be in uh, ten thousands or lakhs okay so the the range of count is different for leukocytosis and leukemia now what is leukopenia what are some causes responsible for it and what are the various types of leukocytes and what are the chief functions so these are some questions that can be asked for the theory part right so i hope this is clear for you thank you